two years in the tooling industry. So our software has been developed for uh, tooling applications. Currently we have 8,500 customers worldwide. Those customers are all doing some kind of tooling, mold work, dye work, something like that. And you can see we're working in 35 countries, so we're definitely a worldwide organization. Well, what do we want to accomplish today? We want to look at the mold design process. But we understand that when we say process, your process could be very different from someone else. Uh, molds are just different from one mold to the next. So we're going to look at how we can reduce the mold design process time. Now, some of our customers are saying that uh, they're actually seeing reductions up to perhaps 50% in their overall design time. So we'll look at some of the tools they're using to achieve that and practice it what others are doing, so there'll be times we'll be talking about the types of molds that you do, and there'll be times we'll be talking about a completely different type. Uh, the importance is that we have sort of flexible so that they can cover those different ranges of mold design. Some of the things that are important about mold design functionality, and with the time we have, I'm not sure we can get into everything, we'll touch upon it. Uh, definitely we want to talk about components as they go into the design. Uh, we also drawings that come off the design. We want to deal with cooling systems and ejection in a way that shins. Also, what does it mean when we deal with knowledge? That means when we place something, we know where it is, we can reference it, and we can edit it. Some important pieces of functionality we'll be looking at. And like, like our session right now, where you're hooked onto the Internet and you're looking at what we're doing, uh, Symmetron is able to support this with web-based support where we could actually look right onto your computer if you have a problem, look right at it, analyze it, and fix it right there, uh, working right off your computer. A little bit about what we're finding out in the industry. Uh, we just did a poll of some of our users and some of our customers, and we're finding that uh, most design shops are spending 76 hours a week doing mold design. And uh, that, of course, depends on the volume of work they're having. Uh, some mold design shop rates, uh, you can see, 71 bucks. So you can do the uh, math and figure out how much a mold design really costs. You might be interested to, to compare your numbers against what that middle-of-the-line kind of uh, number is. Also, we're finding in the overall mold build process, our customers are saying that it takes 55 to deal with the design. And of course, we recognize that means initial design, preliminary design, engineering changes, and on and on it goes. So knowing that there's more involved in design than just you know sitting down designing it once and it's done, the question comes up, who designed the molds? We're finding that 64% of our customers are devoting all the time to one designer, whereas some are finding that they need to use two designers to get through the work. And then the big question is, are you actually going to start cutting steel before you've completed the mold design? Just about right down the middle. So with uh, delivery dates the way they are, a lot of our customers find that uh, for them to meet delivery, they're going to have to start on the production of the tool, the design. So is there a safe way to do that? How can we handle that? And most importantly, can we do that successfully so that we can continue to reduce So we'll get into our demonstration now. Okay, let me open this up just a little bit bigger. And we'll start working with the mold design. Now I'm going to show you what you would think of as one way of getting through mold design. Uh, that since molds are so different one from the next, uh, it's almost impossible to show every type of mold in this one demonstration. What we're going to do is deal with an E. We recognize some of you are directly cutting into your A and B plate. We want you to know, too, though, that it is possible to work with this mold design package and do that type of tooling. Some of our usually molds. So that requires different sets of inserts for the different types of parts they're making. That also can be accomplished using this. Right now what I'm doing is bringing in a cavity and it's either been designed inside Civitron or some other CAD system. Also, this part has got a slide assembly in it, so we're going to be dealing with the slide pull and designing around that. 
I tell it what side of the tool I want the cavity in. I want it in the thick side or the A half. What side do I want the core in? We want it on the non move sorry, the moving side, and we want that to be in the V half. So on and on it goes. Over here on the left, it's building those different sub-assemblies underneath the main old assembly. Dual organized. That way we can analyze just the A half, just the B half, or we can send out to detailed drawings just the A half or the B half. As I rotate this around, you can see the different mold components, and you can see how they're organized now in the different... Over on the right, we've got a mold design wizard. So we'll be progressing down through this, and by the time we're done, you'll see a mold design, and we'll show you what else, uh, is generated from that design. There are different tools set up for a single cavity design, moving it on center and around center, perhaps to avoid the sprue or two. And then also some multi-cavity tools. Now, in this case, we're going to do a multi-cavity design. So to do that, we'll first start with our layout part to orient where the different cavities are sitting at. So notice on my tree I'm creating a layout part. And what we're doing is telling the system what those cavities are going to be. So I'll line this up over the center of tool for a quick two-cavity tool. Give it some dimensions here. Now if to change in the location of these cavities, it's as easy as just, just editing this dimension. Okay, now we want to locate them using our coordinate systems. So I'm going to filter through my tree here. We just want to highlight our mid system, which is always displayed in red here. And let's copy the first location to our first point. And with our second location, we will copy the point and move that in a different orientation. Okay. All right, so there we see our two cavity locations. Next, we will take our first set of instant cavity location one, and there you have it. Now, I've chosen in a path where I'm going to lay out the inserts and the slider assemblies first to show you something that Mold Bay does. Of course, you don't, you don't have to do that. You can build your then bring in the inserts to see if it's an appropriate fit or not. There's no set rule on what you need to do and how to do it. Going back to my, my tree, we'll add in another set of inserts. This could be the same set like you see here. could be mirrored for right hand, left hand. It could be an entire entirely different set of in for something like a family tool. So again, you see we're talking about all kinds of different types of tooling here. We'll bring in the same insert set as before because we're doing an identical tool. Back into the multi-tools, let's take the new set, place it in cavity position two. Now I'm doing a 64 insert, not want to lay this out 64 times, perhaps sometimes just one is enough. And we can place it in one location and then leave that and leave the rest blank. Whatever I do in that one location, I can then copy down to the next location. So if I lock this in with screws, copy the screws down. Or injector pins, copy those down. All right, now let's deal with adding the slide assembly. So we'll make the slide active, as you see with the brighter color. And now we're going to talk about catalog. I'm going to go bring in a part that I've generated. This is a sub-assembly with different gives and sliders and screws built in. And we're going to treat this like just something we designed from scratch. Throw it right here into the assembly. Now, over on the guide, you can see add mold component. If their assembly already built in one of the standard catalogs, you can certainly use that as opposed to what I've done here. You make your own. Use whatever standard catalog you have. Save what you have in your own catalog. The idea of the catalog tool is to make something that's very flexible that uh, you can customize to your own set of needs. So then I now want to anchor it onto my slide block. So 
So I tell the system to line this up face to face like you see here. All kinds of tools in our assembly pack are locating things, dimensioning things, and you can see that what a line and anti-line are doing, flipping it around. So that's one constraint on the slide assembly. Here isn't to totally lock the thing down in X, Y, and Z, like requiring uh, three constraints so that it doesn't move. What we're going to do instead is just get it. So I'll use a point here, and let's go grab my uh, midpoint. So let's lock it to the middle top assemblies. So now that's in position. I want the identical slide on the other side, so I'll use my copy tool, assembly copy. It asks do I want the entire subassembly, just the subassembly I'm working with, just the part. And I tell it where it's going from and where and that can be done across multiple cavity positions. So again if I have a sixty four cavity tool, one operation copies it around all sixty four times. That being the same assembly, whatever I do to one, I do to both. So with a quick double click, we'll get into the intelligence of this block. These are the dimensions that were used. Looking at the width, perhaps the width isn't enough for me, so I'll make it uh, seven inches. By making the slider block bigger, what's going to happen to the, to the wear plate, the location of the gift? When I hit update, you notice everything moves out in relation to that dimension. So you can build relationships between the dimensions. So if one thing changes, it affects the other thing around it. What that basically means is the design of this entire subassembly can be boiled down to perhaps just three dimensions that are going to width and height. By placing the subassembly, I can quickly adjust it so it matches the job, and then I've got it into position. Now on the other side, exactly the same thing has happened. With that, too, you can use components from the catalog. So this screw was brought in from the standard catalog. If I double click on it and go into the edit, it takes me to the catalog tool where I can select a new screw from the catalog. So you can mix and match things. You can use what's in the standard catalogs and use your own parts. From that, with your sub-assemblies, you can go one step further and save it as its own catalog assembly. So now I'm to my own parts, parts I've taken from the catalog, putting them into an assembly and saving them. With all the catalog components, the ones that are included already, make, you can also include the knowledge of the hole that it sits in. So going one step further, we model up the pocket that it sits in. When the part gets bigger, the pocket gets bigger, automatically cuts itself into the retainer. Catalog is a very powerful tool. In fact, it's uh, one of the most, most powerful parts of the system. All right, so now I've got that into place. I've got the entire working area mold. All right. So with that done, let's go into the mold base catalog. Currently, for standard catalogs, we have DM and metric, and we have Hasco inch and metric.